What up? Today we're listening to Pavement's Slanted and Enchanted. I don't know anything about this album besides the fact that it was recommended to me. I've never heard anything Pavement at all. I don't know what genre they're in at all. But yeah, thanks for the recommendation. If you have anything else, uh, drop it in the comments. Thank you for 600 subscribers. And uh, yeah, let's hop right in. Alright, track number one is Summer Babe. Oh, that's loud. I like this. His vocals are really like untouched. Ooh. Oh, that is a long note. That is a long note. I'm liking the indie rock vibes from this a lot, actually. My favorite part of that track had to be the guitar. I thought that, that was amazing. And I like the kind of simplicity behind it. From what I can grasp, the song is obviously about a woman, but uh, this girl who he's attracted to seems kind of untouchable, like he can't really get to her. Yeah, I, I, th I thought that was a cool song. I thought that was a cool song. Track number two is Trigger Cut slash Wounded Kite at 17. Ooh. It's kind of brief. It's kind of brief. I did like that though. Oh, it's not over. What is this? Does this lead into the next song? Should I let this lead in? No, it's nothing. I like that track, man. Uh, that was very brief, though. I think that the track was about a presumed lover that, that he wants to uh, reconcile with that he wants to meet again. Again, I love the guitars on that, and I think that he has a very dynamic vocal range. There were some times, especially in the first verse, where he was very monotone, there was no enthusiasm behind his vocals, and then it really did pick up during the chorus. Track number three is No Life Signed Her. There is so much distortion. Ooh. I like this part though. This is so chaotic. This is so chaotic. That was even more brief than the last song. I don't know if that's my kind of my kind of sound I don't, I don't know if i can get down with that i liked how you know unhinged and chaotic it was but like for me you know, like that's just not my kind of energy <laughs> i don't know perhaps it'll grow on me and then you know returning to it after the uh, i finish the album will make more sense me personally i would not go back to that song <laughs> might have been just a little bit uh too intense for me track four is in the mouth a desert starting off a lot more low-key than the last song What? Those ad libs are a completely different energy. This riff sounds familiar. That might have been my favorite track so far. My favorite part of that was the instrumental like post-chorus. That was incredible. It sounded like familiar too. 
but I feel like I've never heard this song before, so I don't know where I must have heard that from. Compliments to his vocals again for just switching up all different energies throughout the song. It really makes this song kind of feel like a roller coaster. I don't know if I like the uh, ad libs during the chorus, but uh, <laughs> some some parts of these songs aren't really for me. It's just not my kind of style of music, but a lot of other parts I really do enjoy. Track number five is Conduit for Sale. Trying to do what? <laughs> Yo, slow down. I can't. I'm not following it. <laughs> I think he's trying. Ooh. I like that guitar in the back. That track really didn't give me a break. Uh, I actually sort of liked it. <laughs> that I'm trying kind of got stuck in my head towards the end of the song. I was not expecting a little fast-paced kind of spoken word in the, in the middle of this. I don't know who her proctor is. Uh, what's his name? I don't even know his name. But yeah, that was incredibly unexpected, and I'm surprised how much uh, story they told within uh, less than three minutes while keeping with the chorus and everything like that. Track number six is uh, Zurich is Stained. I think it's Zurich. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Ooh. Personally, I think that was a song that I've definitely liked the most here so far. I like the low key kind of like vibes of it. I wish I, I wish it was longer. I'm 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 pissed that that was less than two minutes. I cannot tell you though, for the life of me, what that track is about. Uh, I have no idea what a Zurich is. I don't know what it means for a Zurich to be stained. So I'm lost. But you know what? The vibe of it, I feel it. I feel what he says. I understand. And I did like the little somber guitars on that, and how the how it opened, and especially the one that was kind of playing as he was st stop singing. That was really cool. I like how I like how it ended as well. Track eight is a not eight seven is a relatively short song. Chelsea's little wrists. This percussion does not fit these guitars. What does that mean? Okay, I don't know what it means to be bogged down, uh, and I don't know. I mean, that, that track was just kind of like a little interlude to me. I did admire how off-tempo it was, and it, and it definitely was very chaotic and not like any of the other songs I've heard here so far. So for that, I will give a compliments, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know. All right, track number eight is Loretta's Scars. I feel like this album's going by quick. I don't, I don't, oh. What? Yo, Lovetta, are you okay? I love this. I love this. Oh, I love this guitar, bro. I gotta say, at first, I wasn't really messing with that song, but after... Uh, the first verse, when the chorus hit, it all started to piece together for me, and I liked how his vocals during the chorus are just kind of like woven into the song, and they weren't really standing out. It was kind of like a shoegaze kind of vocal, and I did like the guitar, little, little guitar solo that came right after the chorus as well, and I did like how the track ended off in a very intense place, kind of ramping up. It really did feel like a whole story uh, with the climax and everything. I, did, I like that song a lot. Okay, track number nine is Here. <laughs> Oh, I like this so much. Is 
is this the same singer? This is this is nice. I like their harmonies on this. This is really nice. I guess she spent the last quarter randomly. Probably. I'm, I'm taking that one as my favorite now. I mean, it's such a simple structure. You know, you got your verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and all of it was beautiful. And I, li I loved his vocals during the chorus. I wish I've heard more of that so far. His vocals are a lot more soft than I thought. I, I, I just love I, I just love the songs where they're super low key and they're, super, they're a lot more chill because I, uh, that's just kind of like a personal preference on my end. But I really did like that song a lot, dude. Track 10, we have another relatively short song, Two States. Okay. We're coming off that last track hard, apparently. Okay. I get it, I get it. I love this guitar solo. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I like how that ended with the drums right there. I'm not gonna lie, uh, the guitar solo was like the only part I liked, but that was... Hey, hey, that was cool though. I, li I, I like them kind of singing together. That, that, that was kind of interesting. I don't know what two states they're talking about. Um... I don't know. It's like they're kind of. I feel like they're kind of rooting for a state that they're talking about to, to kind of be split because they don't like the other half or something. I don't know. Kind of awkward for that track to be so short. I feel like that easily could have been longer. Track eleven is Perfume V. Oh, this is crazy. I do like this guitar solo. It's tracks like that that I wish there was more energy in his vocals. I think if there was more energy during the chorus, I think I would have brought the track out a lot more. Because the track is already so short to begin with, it's kind of hard for me to like see that track as a standout. I like the little um, competing vocals with that on the outro, but other than that, I, I just didn't really, I, I didn't really see that track as like anything memorable. Track number 12 is Fame Thrower. Marching band drum. <laughs> This is different. What is happening right now? Ooh. I like that a lot. There is so much going on with this track. I'm so confused. It's kind of hard to dissect that track. There was a lot going on there. I always liked the instrumental post-chorus with the with these guys. I wasn't. I mean, that track had everything. It had like spoken word. It had complete silences. It uh, it had everything. I guess he's. I guess he's one of the nation's spies. I I, I didn't really like the chorus, but uh, just the whole every instrument going on with that track was so unlike anything we've heard so far on this album. Track thirteen is a long song name. Uh, Jackals, false. Uh, what's it called? False Grails. The, the Lonesome Era. Not a lot of lyrics for like a decent really, like length song. Ooh. 
Ooh. Yo, bring this guitar out more. Bring this guitar out more. Oh, that's it? <laughs> it just ended like that? So I'm assuming that track is about the Holy Grail a little bit. Uh, I don't know what the lyrics went kind of towards it though. I did like uh, the two guitar solos happening at the same time. We had that really chill one happening on the right channel. And we had kind of like its evil twin going on on the left side. I thought those coalescing were really good. Very like headache kind of a song though. I mean, I did like it, but it's, it's a lot for me. Uh, these past two tracks have definitely been overstimulating and overwhelming me. Track 14 is the final song, Our Singer. Okay. Anticipating The sun comes up There's burn my As an outro, uh, I was really waiting for that song to end. I just, I just, I don't know, it felt a little too simplistic for me. And as like an outro, usually I expect it to be like a big, like grand finale, but I, I, I really feel like that track didn't go anywhere. And I didn't necessarily hate the song, but in terms of this album, I think I would call it my least favorite. I don't know. You know, his vocals didn't really leave, go anywhere spectacular. And, and then the, the, the repetitive guitar chord kind of got uh, on my nerves a little bit, but I did like the drums. I did like the drums, I have to admit. This album was definitely a learning experience for me. I definitely do not know much about whatever genre I just listened to. I definitely have to dive more into this and I'm sure I'll come to like this album more over time but right now uh, a lot of aspects of it just seem kind of foreign to me still and there are, there are some songs I did love but I think the common trait that all those songs did have was that they were kind of laid back so I think mentally I'm just not ready to handle a lot of the intense kind of uh, instrumentals but I did like how his vocals work uh, very raw you know there was not any effects on them they just turned the mic on and he just sang and some songs he wasn't even singing like there was like two spoken word songs on here and I wasn't expecting that but I did not hate those ones favorite track had to be here for sure that or uh, Zurich I definitely understand uh, this album, but I definitely don't understand it either and I might have to give this another listen in my own time Because some aspects on this album are just not for my music taste uh, And I completely understand that this album is loved by many and uh, everything like that I definitely did enjoy the kind of simplistic production as well. I enjoyed a lot of the guitar work on here Yeah, I did like the subject matter on this a lot though And I felt pretty relatable in some circumstances, but in other circumstances I had no idea what he was talking about to be honest but yeah, that's the album. Uh, if, you wonder, if you want me to react or listen to anything similar, uh, drop it in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah,